And who's going to do it? Who, who does the honor? I see Rich Gannon kind of lining up in front of it. You need a blocker. There's a whole system. You can't just walk up with it. you got to have some protection. I think the linemen are, are celebrating too much right now. They're enjoying it. I mean, I always said as an offensive line, if you can get over 100 yards rushing and not give up a sack and win, that's a great day. And they've had a lot of days like that here in Oakland this year. And I, team, I think a team that Sorry. anybody is going to have trouble with here in the playoffs. I mean, they're going to give people fits because here of the they bounce go. They They're have. grabbing the bucket. Lincoln Kennedy and Daryl Russell. <laughs> Let's see how good they are with it. A couple of linemen with, with big hands here. Let's see how they handle this. They're trying to capture hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They're trying to trap him. Tyrone Wheatley no has the responsibility of getting them, and they get him. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Panthers continue to play. That's catch number 102 for Moussen Muhammad on the year. But more importantly, a big celebration on that Raiders sideline. John Gruden doused as the champions of the AFC West. You know, the son of a coach, his brother's a coach in the Arena League, and all he ever wanted to do was be a head coach. At one time, was on George Seifert's staff in San Francisco, hanging out of Bob McKittrick's offensive line room, just taking notes. A lot of notes now, leading to an AFC West crown. Up top for Muhammad, ball falls incomplete. John Gruden and his team one play away from winning the first division title for the Raiders in 10 years. And his team is, is for real, and Al Davis said, just win, baby, and, and that's what he's done. Everybody said, don't go to Oakland. You don't want to play for the man, Al Davis. He's difficult. He'll interfere. John said, I want to go play for the man. I want to, I want to pick his brain. I want to pick football. I want to learn with him. And it's been a good marriage between the two. And they'll be back here in a couple of weeks to see this team in the second round of the playoffs. Most likely the final play of the game. Lewis to Brad Hoover. Brought down for the tackle. Ball pops out. And the Raiders have recovered. Darian Gordon down the sideline. And this is how the Raiders will crown it off. There's your AFC West champion scoring a 74-yard touchdown on the final play of the game. my nation gather around to prepare for tonight our pride will be restored our shadow will fall with wicked damnation rise my nation rise can you dig it with these enemies from the south. Oh. Chucky. Chucky. They may have taken our so-called fearless leader, but the deceptions do not stop there, my Flacco, no. Chucky. They have taken from us that which is rightfully ours, that which defines us all. <laughs> Listen, we have taken something from them of far greater significance. We have taken their vicious Sunday silencer. <laughs> I am the Night Rider, your fuel injected vengeance machine. I am the Rock. I am the Roller. I am the Out of Controller. Come with me, my brother. The field of war. Two teams enter. One team leaves. We believe, we believe, well, believe my flock. This is your nation. This is our nation. 
This is the Raider Nation. Rise! Rise! It's hours before sunup in Tampa, Florida, and one of the city's best-known citizens is already on the move. Although he's been a coach without a team for the past four years, John Gruden's hunkering down for another long day at the office, doing what he loves best, watching football, studying football, and dissecting football from four in the morning on. Who needs sleep, you know? Who needs it? You drive yourself hard. Yeah. If you call it that. You what know? should I call it? I mean, a guy who gets up at 3.15. That's driving pretty hard, John. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's probably not wise at times, probably not normal. But it's, uh, it's my rhythm. It's the beat that I go to. Let me give you some adjectives that have been applied to you. You tell me if they fit. Confrontational. At times. I mean, who isn't? I can think of a lot of people who aren't. But okay, you know, at times I guess I'm a little confrontational. Yeah. Fierce. Fierce. Yeah, I hope so. Egomaniacal. Egomaniacal. I got a huge ego. <laughs> who said that? I mean, tell me who said that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you who yeah. all these attributed to. Yeah, no, I, you know what? Do I want to win? Do I want to be the best? Hell yeah. You know? Uh, that's ego, that's ego. Uh, it's one thing to go to quarterback camp with John Gruden. It's another thing to go to Camp Gruden itself. Frank Caliendo enrolled and found it was quite a place. Coming this fall, an ESPN original series from the creators of 30 for 30, John Gruden's quarterback camp. And here comes Honey Boo Boo. I'll tell you what, I love football, and I love life, and I love love, man. What a great emotion. Remember on Valentine's Day, those little candy hearts with the sayings on them? Those were genius, man. I wish they had little candy footballs, like tackle me. Got to wrap up, man. Today's a big day for me, man. I'm meeting with the offensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals, who just so happens to be my brother, Jay Gruden. Good to see you, man. How you feeling? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Good? It's hard to believe Jay and I are brothers. I gotta tell you, man, sometimes I think that guy's adopted. Touchdown! Oh. The Red Rifle! to Adriel Jeremiah Green. That right there, that was a magical play, man. Where'd you come up with that play? Did you go to that, uh, that school Harry Potter went to? You mean uh, Hogwarts? Did you go to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Jay? Come on, John, you know that's nothing special. That's just a standard Scorpion 3Y avocado, man. Actually, it looked a little more like a Unicorn 2 Xbox Count Chocula. Just testing you, man. Nice. I like that. I like that a lot. I love talking about football, but sometimes you just got to take a break. Want to watch some football? I thought you'd never ask, man. Hey, guys, we got a problem here, man. Uncle Cy. Actually, his name's George, and he's related to me, but he's not my uncle. Just kind of looks like that guy from Duck Dynasty. Uh... What's his name? Uh, I can't think of it right now. Uh, whatever. He looks like Uncle Cy. How'd I forget that, man? The internet's broke, man. Lack of internet's a serious problem, man. We need to get a good angle of pursuit on that router and reboot that baby ASAP. Yeah. Gotta run a good router, man. I can't emphasize that enough. I disagree with you, Johnny. I think you open up your web browser, type in your username and password. I tell my guys all the time, do not forget your password. You need a password? I didn't know that, man. It's good stuff. Once they had the password, pretty much everything fell into place. Do we overthink things sometimes? Sure. But that's just the way we are. We're a football family, man. All of us.
Who wants some spider two y banana cream pie, man? Positively Gruden. I tell you what, man, I love this family. I want to go back to David Carr because he came out in 2002. Yes, sir. That's the year I was in Tampa Bay. And we didn't have a first round draft choice. We had to trade a first and a second rounder for a star. That was me. <laughs> we, have, we couldn't take your brother. I want to know what it's like witnessing a brother going number one in the draft. Right. What was that like? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, again, that's something that not a lot of you know twelve year olds get to experience. You know, going to the draft, just witnessing those things, it's such a blessing. But he's still a big part of your life, isn't he? I mean, he's at yes. every one of your home games. He still looks like a movie star. <laughs> But he comes to all your games. He's, he's, he was the man at Fresno. What's it like having a big brother that played at this university as your number one supporter? What an advantage. You know, just what a blessing it is from God mm -hmm. to have, you know, a, a guy like that who's been through, you know, the roller coasters of this game. I've been around, you know, football, around the NFL game since I was 12, you know, 11, 12 years old. I remember sitting down with him. He's getting ready for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, just another Sunday, you know, afternoon game. And I'm sitting there at 12 years old saying, oh, it's third and four? Okay, the nickel's pressed. Oh, they're playing two-man this time. Oh, he's doing this. Oh, they're blitzing this time. You know, 12-year-olds aren't supposed to watch NFL games and do those things. I played quarterback. My brother played quarterback at Louisville. Yep. I played at Dayton. Are you better than them? You know, I... I, I mean, if you're I, both on the board. If yeah. you're both on the board, who are you taking? Yeah, I'm taking me. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a competitor, and he'll say the same thing. He said, he'll say, I'm taking myself because... We are extremely confident in what we do. No, nah, you can't answer this politically correct. No, no. You're not like him at all. No. You're in a totally different offense, in right. a totally different era. And right. your position playing style is totally different. Yeah, it is. Now, I want you. Right. What do you say about that? I appreciate that. You know, let's go win some championships now. 70% completions, 113 touchdowns and 24 interceptions. This is, this is a lot of yards, man. Yes, How sir. many yards? 13,000? Yeah. Is your arm sore? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> I can throw, throw all day. Where's Derek Carr throwing the football with the great ones? You can line anybody up against me, and I'm going to throw against them. And I, and, and I like my chances, you know, in, in the most humble way. There's not a throw that I can't make, you know, and if I have to make it, I will make it. I'm very confident. Uh, you know, I feel like I, like I can fit one in behind a corner's face. You know, I feel like even if the guy's covered, I can put, it, put the ball where it needs to be so we can have a successful play. I mean, you're six foot three, two hundred twenty pounds. You run four six. You got a great pedigree with your brother. Yes, you sir. call all the plays in college, and you average fifty points a game. What's wrong with all the hmm. the, re the reading I've done? I don't see your name up here in these mock drafts. <laughs> Is there something I'm missing? No, sir. Is Good. there a flaw? A, a dramatic flaw? No, sir. Yeah, there's two different kinds of perceptions of me. You know, there's one in the media, and then there's one that matters. You know, there's uh, you know, the ones the, the ones that I'm getting from the coaches, the GMs. That kind of perception is a lot different than the one you hear on TV. So you know, we'll find out on draft day. Another fantastic year of Gruden's QB camp. We got guys like Teddy Bridgewater, Johnny Manziel, and Blake Portals. But there's one guy. This guy, I've always wanted to see this guy in the quarterback chair. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, coach. I'll tell you what. You look pretty good over there, man. It's a little intimidating being over there, isn't it? It's about to get a little intimidating over there, isn't it? I'll tell you what. I'm gonna need a clean up on aisle five after that look, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you might. Things might have started out a little rocky, but I'll tell you what. After a little while, we started seeing eye to eye, man. Let's talk about this guy. What do you see from Betty Bridgewater, man? Bridgewater's another junior. He's out of Miami, Florida, and he really helped turn Louisville from a basketball team to a football powerhouse. Wait a second, you're telling me he took a bunch of basketball players and made them play football? I don't see that happening, man. When you man. think of Louisville, what do you think of? You think of their basketball team. I used to think of don't basketball. You? Now I think of Teddy Bridgewater. You ever play with this coach's clicker, man? It's, he used the one that says play. Play? So I press play and like it if plays. You want it to go backwards. I you press rewind, rewind. It actually goes back in time. Think of look at this guy's man. 
Take a look at what's going on here. We're actually breaking the space-time continuum, man. Who designed the forward-backward mechanism that goes on with this thing? Show me green right slot albacore 3 y quesadilla. You know this one. Play does not exist. How about tarantula 2 Z beryllium phosphate? What are you doing there, man? That's Frankenberry 3 Xbox 460. Come on, man. Would you rather stay in the pocket or are you going to run outside? You got somebody like uh, Jared Allen coming at you. What are you going to do, man? You're going to stand there and take the shot. You're going to take that shot? You're going to let the monstrous Jared Allen come at you and take a big time shot? What about your linemen, man? What are they doing? <laughs> Do I look 50 years older with these glasses on right now, man? I feel like I could be telling stories to little kids somewhere. Remember, the kids used to put a tire out, man. You put a tire out, sometimes you swing on it. Football players, you know what they do with that swing, man? What's that? They throw footballs through it. That's right. Let me put the glass on again. I feel smarter. <laughs> Not working. All right. <laughs>
Now do you feel like you're a big-time quarterback here or what? I mean, these aren't common throws. These are not common plays that I'm seeing you make here. Yeah, I mean, those are some pretty, uh, pretty risky throws. You know, something that you might not coach someone into actually throwing. But, um, I mean, watching a play like that, and then obviously the Trevin play, I mean, just being a playmaker, you know, being a, a complete football player, you know, play breaks down, and, you know, you, you got to make some out of nothing. Your mentality playing the quarterback position is different than any kid I've had in here in three years. I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're an aggressive <clears throat> offense. You're an aggressive quarterback. This throw against Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship, it's a deep out route. It's covered to look at you, look to the flat. You manipulate that corner, and you drive this ball on a dime for one of the great throws in college football. But you're a gunslinger, aren't you? Gunslinger. Are you? Yes, sir. We, uh, we always talk about that in our QB room, actually. We have a group chat. I'm still in it. You know, they don't want to get rid of me <laughs> just yet. But uh, it's called Gunslingers, and um, we kinda, I kind of started saying that back when I, was, when I first started playing when I was a sophomore. And that kind of became like a household name for us. I mean, we'd be watching football, you know, Monday Night Football with you, and we'd be watching, you know, Philip Rivers. Like, man, Philip Rivers, he's a gunslinger right there. <laughs> and, you know, we'd call you the legend of all gunslingers, actually. Oh, yeah? And, uh, you know, being called a gunslinger by you is actually the, the, one of the best compliments I think I've ever had.